In this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to install VMware ESXi 5.1 hypervisor. Uh, the video itself I'm going to actually record over a, a DRAC card, so I can hopefully record this in the best quality possible. And I'm going to try and keep the video under 10 minutes, so some of the stuff I'm going to fast forward, but I'm going to do my best to not cut anything out or skip anything. The server itself is going to be a Dell PowerEdge 2950 Generation 2. It's got two Xeon quad cores, totaling eight cores. Uh, 16 gigabytes of DDR2 RAM, 673 gig hard drives arranged in a RAID 5 configuration, and I'm going to be actually installing the VMware install on an 8 gigabyte thumb drive, and it's just going to be plugged into the back of the machine. Some machines have embedded memory internally, but this one doesn't. But uh, the install itself is relatively small and lightweight, so uh, the embedded install is the preferred way to go. To get your install image, all you have to do is visit VMware.com, sign up for a free account, and they will give you the image and the license key for free. And then you just burn that to a CD and boot from it. As you see here, we're waiting to boot from the CD now. The ESXi hypervisor itself is fantastic. It's Linux based, it's lightweight, uh, it's easy to install and configure, it's easy to get virtual machines up and running, uh, and it's free. All you have to do is go to VMware.com, uh, sign up for a free account, they'll give you an ISO image, I think it's about 300 megabytes, and uh, they'll also give you a free license key. Alright, it looks like the server is almost up, and we should see the ESXi installer kick off here in a second. And it's going to ask us if we want to boot to the standard installer, or if we would like to boot from a local disk. We're going to go ahead with the first option, and follow through to the installer. And now we see the ESXi installer kicking off and it's going to go through and it's going to load up a series of files. This is the first of two screens that we'll see that are loading files. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to some of these parts here but uh, you get the idea of what's going on. It just sits here and loads a bunch of files. This is the second screen that I was referring to. Here it will show you some information about the system as it continues loading more files. This whole process here takes about approximately 5 to 10 minutes. Alright, and here we see our welcome screen, and it's going to ask us to hit enter to continue. And then here we get our EULA, of course, and you just hit F11 to continue and accept. And then it's going to go ahead and scan and look for installation devices or hard drives. Okay, so we see that it found two disks, our RAID setup and our SanDisk Cruiser 8GB thumb drive. We're going to go ahead and select that one. And uh, if you hit F1, it'll actually give you more information or details about the drive itself. And it'll give you stuff like the capacity of the drive and is there a previous installation of ESXi on there. And we're just going to hit Enter to continue on. And then we're going to hit Enter to select the drive here and it asks us to confirm our disk selection, it says it's going to wipe the drive, wipe out any partitions, hit enter to continue, and then it asks about the default keyboard layout, we're going to use the regular one, the US, and then we're asked to set up the password for the root account, this will be the account that you use to log into the server. And we're asked one last time to confirm the install, and it says it'll be installed on such and such drive, press F11 to continue, and, ins and begin installing to disk here. This process can take a little while, so I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through some of this. But uh, if it looks like it hangs here and there, it's okay. It'll continue on. Just let the installer go. Okay, so we see that our install completed successfully. Uh, it mentions that ESXi will be in evaluation mode, but you can use that license key, like I said, you can get for free from them. Uh, and you're going to hit enter, and it will pop the disk out, and it's going to go ahead and reboot. And there we get our message that it's going to reboot the server, uh, and this process can take a few minutes. I'm going to go ahead and speed up this portion a little bit. Okay, so this is actually the ESXi install on the disk booting up now. This is the first portion of it that you'll see. 
and now this is the second portion of the boot process. As you may have noticed, the boot process looks very similar to the install process. Okay, so this is a fully booted ESXi server. You see it shows some information about the system on this screen. And down there at the bottom, if we hit F2, we can do some custom configuration to the system itself. And then we are asked to log in using the uh, account that we made during the install process. It takes a second to load the menu, but you're going to see that we have basic functions for like setting the password, the network, keyboard, viewing some logs, like I said, basic functions. And uh, what we want to do here is go ahead and set the network. Uh, you see that it shows we have two NICs installed. One of them is enabled for the management network right now. But uh, what we really want to do is go ahead and set the IP up for the server. It takes some getting used to, moving around it, but uh, it's not too bad. You see that uh, you use spacebar to select items. And uh, we're going to go ahead and set a static IP here. And I'm going to leave the subnet mask and the default gateway because they're correct for my network. And then you just press enter to accept those changes. And next we're going to turn off the IPv6. Let's go back to that. You can just hit spacebar to unselect it. That turns that off. And then you see there's options for your DNS settings as well. Okay, now that we're all done, you just hit escape. And it will be prompted that it needs to restart the network management. You hit Y to continue. And in this case, it's going to reboot the server. Okay, so you see that we have a fully booted ESXi server, and uh, the first thing we want to do is go see if we can connect to it via a web browser by using the IP address that we set on the server. And it'll say that the connection is untrusted, but we want to go ahead and accept all this, add an exception, and carry on into the web management of the server. And this is where we'll go to download the uh, vSphere client that we'll use to manage the server itself and you see the download link there. There's some other tools on here as well like the command line interface and and stuff like that. Now I already have the client installed on this machine so I'm just going to skip the install process but uh, here it is here. Uh, you use the IP address we made and you're going to use the root account and the password that we set up during the install process and then you see we get another certificate warning we're just going to go ahead and accept or ignore that and uh, it takes a second to load up here but hopefully it will connect to our server. And it popped up on my other screen there. But uh, this is the console itself that we'll use to remotely manage the server. Uh, you really don't do a whole lot on the actual physical server itself. It's all done through this remote console. So you see right away that the server tells us we have no data stores configured on the system. So we go to the configuration tab and then storage. And we're going to go ahead and add storage. And we just want to add disk or LUN. And uh, you'll see that it shows our, uh, our Dell RAID setup. And we're just going to go ahead and next, next, finish through this. Uh, and then we, it asks us for a name. We'll just name this one data store. And that's it. And then you see at the bottom pane there that it's going to show us that it, it's adding the storage. This is where you'll set most of the configuration for your machine, like the networking and uh, any health information. Notice that there's the license features here. Uh, this is where it'll tell you about the licensing information about your server, as well as this is where you would enter the license key that you pick up from VMware. Uh, if you go over the summary tab, it shows you all kind of information about the server itself. Uh, and then the virtual machine tab here is where you would go to create your virtual machines. It's pretty easy. You just right click new virtual machine and bam, you're good to go. And that wraps up my uh, ESXi demonstration. You now have a fully configured server and you're ready to start creating virtual machines. Uh, any questions, comments, hit me up below. I uh, hope you enjoyed and uh, thank you for watching.